You are listening to the Pencil and Paper Podcast Network. Visit PencilandPaperProductions.Podbean.com to find more great podcasts. Welcome to the Palace of Metapixels. This is Super Meta Crash Brothers Turbo! Welcome to Super Mega Crash Brothers Turbo. I'm your host, Stephen White. With me is is my co-host, Lacia Finley. Happy Monday. How are you this morning? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I feel you. Yeah, I I don't know what it was. It was just like a a hard morning to want to get going, you know. But, uh, you know, I'm good, though. I'm Mm -hmm. good. Yeah. It happens from time to time where you're just like, yeah, let's just lay in here would be the best course of action, I feel like. But, you know. Yeah, you gotta I mean, do your thing. that's right. I mean, it's been a I feel like the last couple of days have just been kind of blah. So I just want the rest rainy of rainy and poopy out, you know, so mm. I don't know. Maybe that has something to do with it. Oh, yeah. I was really upset dragon. with the rain more than anything because I decided I was going to mow my lawn and try to get it done before, you know, the rain but came in because I because I thought I had time. And while I was on, I had maybe just 30 more minutes left, the rain came in. It wasn't sprinkles. It was just like, nope, it's time for the rain. And I was like, going to downpour now. Yeah. And <laughs> what, I was so mad. I was like, come on. So now I've got half a lawn mode because of the stupid <laughs> rain. And it's not stopped since. So uh, well, it looks terrible. It'd be nice and extra long grass on the one side. But... Mm-hmm. So uh, what you been playing? You know, I started Yakuza Zero again. Oh yeah. I never, I never finished it the first time I started it because it's another one of those that's it's long. It's mm-hmm. a long game, and I, I, I was kind of surprised that it was nine months ago was what my save uh, file had said. So I didn't realize it had been that long since I had started the game. But uh, and I guess I'm not even really that far in. I think I started chapter three, and I thought I was further along. And the completion says I don't know, like five percent on the story or something like that which is yakuza games are story heavy yeah like yeah. there's large chunks of time where you're literally just watching a cut scene I, I i wouldn't be surprised if they're 10 15 minutes long over and over so like there's very little like going out and and playing with the exception of every time you're walking down the street obviously some street gang goon thug whatever wants to just attack you so i guess like that's just a thing within the world but i mean i really do like it like the story is good um i think just my only hesitation is just how long it takes to get through the game so it might be one of those where i just try to play it once or twice a week and see how long it'll take me to get through it that way but uh it's good it's fun it's ridiculous it's (laughs) exactly what i like out of it i mean it's not as huge as, say, like, you know, a Phoenix Wright game or something like that. Right. But, uh, yeah, you know, this is supposed to be going back to the roots with this story for uh, for, for the main protagonist through the Yakuza games. So mm-hmm. if I could just get myself through it. Um, I'm enjoying it, though. I'm enjoying Good. it. That's the only thing that I've uh, gone back to playing. Everything else, it just, like, putzing around on The Sims and stuff like that. So nothing exciting to report there. Right. <laughs> I don't even laundry, you know, (laughs) I actually don't think we touched on that, but uh, I did notice that the Yakuza judgment game is actually going to come out and they did replace the actor. Oh, okay. So they, I I think I saw a comparison video where it showed the old footage and the new footage Mm -hmm. of who, whatever actor they used to replace him. So it's coming. I don't oh, okay. know how so, we. Like, it was the whole thing, so it was the. Uh, mm-hmm. He was the model for the actor as well, not just the voice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so... wow. okay, yeah, that's a huge overhaul for sure. So, so... okay, delayed for sure then, but mm-hmm. uh, that's good to know because I was kind of excited about that one. It seemed interesting. Oh, yeah. It hit yeah. the right buzzwords for me, anyway. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't want to. I mean, I've never. I think I've played 
a bit of one Yakuza game, but it was at the end of my PlayStation 3's life cycle, and I was just like, eh, I want to go play on the 4. <laughs> I think that's 5. Might have been. I, I think it was five, even a... I a, think I had the same one. I think I got it for free, actually, on yeah, PlayStation yeah. Plus. I think that's why I had game. it. It was a good yeah. game. You know, so. but another one, it's super long. Like the mini games are just what's so much fun in there. Cause you got like karaoke mini games and DDR mm-hmm. mini games and you know, all these just like ridiculous things that you'll go through the street doing just to like earn a little extra cash or whatever it is that you're trying to level up at the time. And it's just, it's hilarious. Yeah. Just the random people that you meet on the street, you know, that's teaching you this, that or the other, mm-hmm. but uh, you get several different fighting stances and, uh, go be bad guys it's pretty yeah. much to the point <laughs> you know and watch the story for about half an hour at a time and then right. run around and rinse repeat yeah mm-hmm. i think the five one though you actually got to be like a cab driver or something i feel like that was something that you did for extra cash also oh okay the, or at least the last one i played i could be getting my numbers mixed up because there's a lot of yakuza games and there's oh, yeah. another one still yet to come out so mm-hmm. or has come out still yet to come to pc something i don't know i'm waking up sorry <laughs> it's okay <laughs> one of those things i actually what think that's in the uh i've been playing mortal kombat 11 obviously uh, yeah. and i will say now uh i think i'm starting to understand the grind a little bit because when i was when i was starting it Obviously, I was a little bit more focused on trying to get used to the game and understanding the mechanics, uh, focused on the story and everything like that. Now, you know, I'm done with the story, which, by the way, the way they ended it, I will say this with no spoilers, the way they ended it, I feel like they have a fresh start for the franchise now. Oh, yeah? Okay. Like, I would love to see where they go from here because... It really feels like if you go from 9 to 11, they have a trilogy arc. Unlike, you know, anything that they've done previously. Because every game up to this point, up until 9, there's story, but it's been very light on the story. So it's not, you know, you get bits and pieces. So you kind of have to piece it together based on what what you've been given. But these are more story heavy, so you really understand what's going on in the world based on what they want you to know. But from 9 to 11, this feels like one completed arc, one trilogy of games. And again, where they ended it, I feel like they can go anywhere. They can say, all right, from here, where do we go? Wherever you want. And this is the storyline? Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. So I was I was really impressed by that. Now I don't know. I think I've seen other people who aren't happy about it for oh, yeah. for whatever reason. That, and I, that's always going to be the case, right? Yeah, but I don't really understand why. I guess from my perspective, I'm like, you don't seem to understand what they've done. They've created a clean slate in a way. You know, they don't. I don't feel like they're bound to anything that has come before it at this point. They can just say. We're 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 done with all the story. We're done with all that. Where do we go from here? Wherever you want, you have a clean slate. Based on the the way they ended the story, that's where you go from here. Wherever you want. So I mean, they could even change up the mechanics, the gameplay, in all sorts of ways. Should they want to continue, or they don't have to. They could. I mean, that's that's a capper. You know, you could easily say that. That's the end of the the series. Yeah. I mean, it's. Whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. That's just me. And I, I, again, if that was maybe mild spoilers, but I didn't spoil anything. I just said fresh, clean slate. I, like, I think that's almost kind of expected. Now you come out of a movie or a game and you're always, it's there's some sort of cliffhanger there that gives you, eh, we might do something else, but we just want to leave it mm. open just in case. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know? They may not, but eh, okay. But as far as the grind goes, um, Okay, so you get into the crypt, and that's where you can spend all your currencies and stuff like that. I did not realize at the time, because I had a handful of coins, you know, and you fight and you fight, and you really earn a lot of coins, and there are tons of chests in the crypt that are coin-based. Easy. But then you have soul chests, and then you have heart chests, and that's where the grind comes in, because they contain the good stuff. All your extra... Yeah, they contain, like, 
the you know like bonus skins and other fatalities and brutalities and you know all the good stuff that you really really want mm. so when you're fighting you earn hearts essentially through fatalities and brutalities and i must not have paid attention to how many you got initially but you really only get three hearts for every fatality you do then you get five for a brutality and then you can get, earn a bonus three if you perform a mercy before you kill them so you can get up to at least eight if you do a mercy and then a brutality so i mean that's it's a decent amount however yeah However, each chest is about 250 hearts. I was just going to ask you that. Like, so yeah. how much is it? Yeah. So it that's where the grind really comes in. And the souls, that's... I and feel like that's you, where they could just sell you hearts if they wanted to, right? Like, so if you want to not put in all the effort. Well, see, that was the other thing I was curious about. Because if you go to their storefront, you cannot buy that stuff. The only thing you can buy are time crystals, and I haven't even used any time crystals. I have earned tons, but I've never used them, so I don't know where they come into play. Oh. So I'm curious about that. Yeah. But the crypt is fun. I mean, just in the sense that there, it's not just running around opening chests and stuff like that. Like, there are areas that are, like, blocked off and things. Uh -huh. So you have to find certain chests that may have artifacts, or you may have to go to a certain area and find an artifact, and then that will open up yet another spot. You'll find weapons and, and artifacts that will help you. Like, you can find Scorpion Spear. You can find, um, was it Raiden's Lightning Staff? I think there was Kenshi's Blade. Or no, his Blindfold. Because when you put that on, you can see invisible walls. You can see invisible chests and things like that. So... There are things that you can find, and then it's almost like you're trying to explore every inch of the crypt, but at some point you do get to a spot where you're kind of, like where I'm at right now is at a standstill, because there's one area, and this is more of that grind shit that I, I can understand where people are getting frustrated. There's a line of, uh, I guess, pedestals that has everyone's head above one pedestal. And every time I walked up to it, it says locked. So I was like, well, what is this? I looked it up. Apparently, this is a uh, like a sacrifice pedestal of some sort. The only way you get someone's head on a pedestal is to perform a fatality on that specific character 50 times. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Then that will unlock something <laughs> special for whatever... Not only that, what makes this even more frustrating is, <clears throat> I mean, it's, I thought maybe it was just killing them. No, it has to be a fatality. Then one character in spe specifically that you have to do this for, it creates an artifact in which you can take to the forge that is inside the crypt to create another item that will help you get deeper into the crypt. So you have to do this if you want to get deeper into the crypt. Oh my god. So it's Yeah, I, I would never get anywhere with that. Yeah, it's it's, it's gotten to a point where it's just like but but I will say this. From a grind standpoint where I didn't really have to work at it all that much, I went to the Towers of Time and you can turn on an AI mode where the fighters just fight for you. So I can just do that, let the, the computer fight for me, do the tower, and then I can just do whatever else until it's done. <laughs> so That seems really strange. Yeah, but I mean, it, I earned a lot of coins. <laughs> okay, so like you're spending your coins for that? All right. No, 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 no. You don't spend coins for that. That's just oh. a, that's an alternate mode. You can turn that on whenever you want. Okay. So, now, there are certain towers where you actually have to fight, but the option to do an AI battle is it's pretty prominent throughout each tower. Interesting. So for me, I mean, the most I actually got at one point, I just said, all right, I'm going to do all these towers because they got the time towers that'll disappear after a certain amount of time. And then you can only get certain gear if you complete the towers. So I just said, you know what? I'm going to do all these towers. And this is actually while I was kind of working on other things at the time. So yeah. I just did that and I racked up, 
almost a million coins. About How many a, times did you lose? None. Really? Yeah, they asked pretty good. <laughs> I'll say that. Yeah. I mean, it got to a point where it, I'd say it started to lose because the towers were getting harder. So it does have a, a bit of a curve, but as long as it's uh, medium difficulty, it seems to do all right. Once it gets into hard, it struggles a little bit. Okay. So, but anyway. There you go. You don't even have to play your video games anymore. That's right. I mean, it helped for, for a lot of trophies and stuff. <laughs> so I, I, I didn't have to worry about that. Yeah. So, but anyway, yeah, the grind is significantly real. real they did yeah. they did update it but there's still a grind so i have noticed minor changes but it's still kind of like uh, i don't know so we'll see i mean i'm sure if if i put it down at some point i'll definitely come back once dlc characters start to drop so we'll we'll see i don't know how much longer i'll be playing right now but i know it will will return um, and then I also played Ace Attorney to kind of cleanse the palate, just to, to kind of do whatever. And I think I finished the last case in season, or I said season. Uh, same game, difference, I game guess. Game one, yeah, in game one <clears throat> where you the got to do all the, the fingerprinting and the luminol spray. Mm-hmm. I always liked that case. I thought it was a added new elements. And if I'm not mistaken, the more I played it, I was like... I think they added that case in because they were adding those elements into another game, which I think might have been the Apollo Justice series, which was kind of a, a it's a yeah, sequel, it does but have an, it in Apollo Justice, I know that. Yeah, so I think they they introduced that once the games returned, just to say, okay. hey, this this thing is going to come in to play, so why don't you get familiar with it here, you know, yeah. so you can kind of feel it out a little bit. I think that was the the purpose behind it, but sounds good. Yeah, it's still fun. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's talk about some news. We don't we don't have a lot, but kind of a slow week, yeah. Yeah, but I think last the one, week there was a lot, and then this week not so much. Yeah, I mean the the one big story that uh, came through is I would personally say, and I'm going to say this right now, even though there's uh, things to the contrary, I think Anthem is officially dead. Sounded because like it, right? Yeah. I mean, Bioware hasn't said those exact words, but um, there was a news report that came out that uh, numerous project leads for Anthem have apparently moved on to focus on Dragon Age 4. Yeah. And we even talked about a few weeks ago that they are using the Anthem engine for Dragon Age 4. Uh, So they have the resources, they have all these other things. Now, some may argue that this isn't necessarily what they mean, and they could be leaving the game in very capable hands to continue. Mm -hmm. Um, But after the rocky launch, you got the lackluster response from everyone. I feel like Bioware and EA, more EA than Bioware, uh, is looking to just cut their losses while they're ahead. And um, I feel like that this... Failure, as it were, paints a grim picture for Bioware because if Dragon Age 4 turns out to be a flop as well, and considering... Yeah, I'm a little nervous for now. And considering rumors that uh, it's also going to be a live service game, I'd say it's looking pretty pretty bad. Dragon Age 4 is supposed to be? Mm-hmm. That's the rumor. Yeah, I know, I know. But I think Bioware is going to see its doors shut pretty soon if they have another flop on their hand and um but but as i said all this as i said all this bioware stepped forward and said no they're committed to anthem but let's be real you know well (laughs) i guess it just depends on how much support it's going to get moving forward yeah you know now that people continue to play it (laughs) Mm -hmm. now to add insult to injury one disgruntled player of Anthem actually received a full refund for the game from Amazon where he purchased the game after creating a compelling argument against the product. He blatantly claimed that the game was falsely advertised and fraudulent, pointing out that the game's roadmap of content is no longer on the table, thereby creating a broken promise by the developer and publisher, which should be classified as illegal practice. So, considering Sony took note of the failure early on and offered refunds, I don't think it's that outrageous to see right. this being a trend 
So. Yeah. Oh, man. <sighs> you feel like in this day and age, you would just know better. Yeah. Like as yeah. a developer, like you just know better. Mm-hmm. Like if, if it's even hinting at all, like it's not going to be what you said it was going to be. You better just hit that delay button or something, man. Because, I mean. They really should have. I mean, what would it have hurt to just hold off? They had or what? stop promising all of these features until you know that you've at least gotten it in the game. Yeah, you like think... you may not have it polished yet, but you have it in the game, and then go, hey, we have this feature. Well, take I think a look. That's their biggest problem I've seen with some developers. Like we're promising these huge, great things, and then by the time the game comes out, you have like two or three of the things mentioned, and the whole fifty other things that was the huge selling point was missing from the game. <clears throat> Just stop doing that. Just well, take, don't mention what you want to do until it's in the game. Take a look at uh, No Man's Sky. Uh, I mean, that should have been a rude awakening for anyone who sat there and promised stuff. I mean, it's been two to three years before it actually became the game they promised it would be. Mm-hmm. Granted, it is what it is now, but think of the hit it would have really been had they just waited two or three years. Right. Like, you know? just promise what you knew you had. And then as time progresses, go, we are adding this and this and this. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't have been That's that fine. hard. If the gamers don't know that it's going to be in there and that it's something that happens months down the line, bonus. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, don't I just know. they're they're all out to make a quick buck and they're eager to do so. Mm-hmm. And EA is one of the biggest offenders. What, well, trying you to... know, once, now that we see that the gamers are fighting back, now even getting refunds. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Stop. yeah. stop and think about these things. Because, yeah, mm-hmm. if they're starting to take the side of you are absolutely promising false things now, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, all they've got to do, like you said, fight back with your wallet. Mm-hmm. So. Stop buying it. Yeah. But we'll see how that goes. I don't know. I mean... Who knows? Maybe in three years, Anthem will be the next No Man's Sky and have yeah, all these amazing things, but I doubt it. It'll I really doubt time it. Time to get forgiveness just like they did. They put in their time and effort, and, and gamers have now seemed to come around and forgive them. Those that were fans of it in the mm. first place, but yeah. For sure. <clears throat> uh, let's do some quickets, because that's the only news I have. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. That's how slow it was this week. Yeah. Uh, everything else was a headline, kind of, but uh, the first thing I had is uh, Epic Games acquired Psionics, the developer uh, for Rocket League, which is... Uh, I just heard about this, yeah, so I guess uh, supposedly Steam is still going to have support, but it's going to be moved over. That's I... Yeah, that's that's what I'm hearing, so... You know, there's another popular game going to the Epic And I feel store. that's weird, too, because, like, are, is that is Rocket League still... I, I know a lot of people who play it, but are people really buying a lot of new copies of that? I don't know. I'd have to look into that. It just seemed like a very random game to acquire because it's been out for so long already. Well, I mean, they're acquiring the developers, so not... I mean, oh, they're just yeah. getting the game as a bonus, but right. it is a popular game, so... You know, and there was a lot of the, I, th- I think it was one of the games that uh, fans argued for cross-play when, when that whole debate came through. So, I, I mean, you're right, yeah. I'd say it's probably still pretty popular if yeah. people are still right. clamoring for it. Uh, so just don't run in the right circles. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Uh, also, while we're talking of Epic Games, Saber Interactive actually thanked them for the sales of World War Z being above expectation. I don't them, know. Then. Yeah. I don't see how that correlates, but I mean, good. Well, maybe <laughs> maybe the developers <laughs> of World War Z were like, crap, we overpromised. Nobody's going to like this shit. <laughs> like, see. And like, but, oh, Epic sold more than we thought. Okay, good. Good game. Yeah. No, I mean, it was a great game. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, also, I guess it could be. I the, mean, having that extra 12% in your pocket probably helps too. That's, that's what I was going to lean toward. Yeah. So maybe that's it. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, the World Video Game Hall of Fame just inducted four new games into its ranks. Uh-huh. Super Mario Kart, which okay. I feel like should have been in there by now, but hey, good, yeah, good on. Yeah, we thought about that. <laughs> uh, Mortal Kombat, good for them. Colossal Cave Adventures, 
Don't don't know don't what that is. Know what that is? All right. And I think this is a game we've all played: Microsoft Solitaire. Oh, Hall of yeah. Famer now, huh? Yeah. I mean, Excellent. It, it, admittedly, One, we've the, all the, the largest game nobody ever bought. That's right. Everyone <laughs> has played that at some point in their life. You know, is it just game on your freaking PC? <laughs> yeah, you're just like eh, I'm bored. Solitaire. Yep. Before all this other just free random games you could download or websites you could go to to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. I don't think it comes on it anymore, actually. I, don't, I would I, I would disagree. Online. Yeah, I would disagree. I think it does. It's I've, fun. I've not looked. I mean, for, I, for a yeah. solitaire game, it's fun. Yeah. You have your, your time with it. Uh, Valve officially unveiled the Index, its own high-end VR hardware, and its yes. $1,200 price tag. That is, uh, there, man. that is massively expensive. <sighs> it's insanely expensive. It just makes me wonder who the market is for that. Because, I, I, I mean, right? supposedly they're already sold out, though, of the first round. Are you so, kidding? I mean, I, I, I mean, yeah. Like, so, I mean, like, with the pre-orders and stuff like that. Now, I don't know how many it was. Like, how, how many devices or whatever that they put together. But, yeah, just Wow. Yeah, I I was not expecting it to be that expensive. There's yeah, the, no way in hell I'm getting my hands on it for sure. No, I mean unless uh, Valve, you want to send it to me and I'll give you a nice review. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's 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 insane. Although they are suggesting that like I guess the Vive controllers can work with it. So like I've already seen articles of people trying to parcel it out to try to make it more affordable. So it's like if you just get the headset with the base, you know, it's like 600 bucks or something like that. But then if you get the knuckles thing, those are like 200 bucks. And I started like breaking down all the different things that come with it that you could just buy individually and try to make it cheaper. So, mm. um, but did that didn't just get a vibe. I don't know. You know, at that point. Yeah. I mean, I mean I'd have to just... see it though, but that's very high. For for twelve hundred dollars, it better be the best VR experience you've ever had in your entire existence. To justify the specs are it. pretty good. Um, it's the refresh rate that was like insanely high that I've mm. not seen on a VR headset, and so and again, it would be one I'd have to get into to know just how vast of a difference it is and what what that really makes up. Because like mine's fine, I feel like with what I have, mm. but now you're almost doubling it, so I'm. I, I would have to see it. I would have to see it to know. Yeah. But the controllers look nice and slick. And they actually sure. and they apparently has like 87 <laughs> sensors or something in it. So it actually can track your finger movements and everything. So, I mean, it's got some cool features. I don't know if it's $1,200 worth of features, but. No, no. <laughs> I just, I, it's. Like I said, I would have to get into the headset and just be 100% blown away. But they're mm-hmm. still using sensors and everything like that, too. So. Then like a base set. I don't know. It just sounds really crazy. Well, we'll see. <laughs> uh, ad- advanced Micro Devices, or AMD for those not in the know, uh, s- their CEO, Lisa Su, said that the PlayStation 5 will have the, quote, secret sauce. Yeah. I don't I don't know what that is. <laughs> Seems like such a throwaway comment, and then we're all yeah. like, wait a minute, what now? What, what, what is the secret sauce exactly? I, 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 <laughs> yeah exactly i'm just like I, okay if that, if that's what you said I, I, i'm wondering if it's just like commenting on the fact that like what these chips were made for the playstation 5 right like so yeah, it's yeah. not going to be like factory something i could buy to put in my pc or anything like that so it's just mm. maybe maybe there's some cool features coming along with that that we just we don't even realize is a thing yet because it's being developed for this particular piece of hardware yeah well we'll see yeah. See if that secret sauce is as saucy as they make it sound. <laughs> Better be bringing it, man. You're overpromising. Don't overpromise mm-hmm. now. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you saw this, but Gearbox announced that Borderlands 3 will have microtransactions despite, <laughs> despite CEO Randy Pitchford saying otherwise. And he's even taken to Twitter to defend his statements by saying it's only cosmetics. It is. That's look, what look, if you are buying something extra, 
very small two dollar hat or whatever it is it's a micro That's transaction yes. i don't care if it's i don't care not if it's not away. currency or whatever it's still a micro transaction people called you out on it because you said no micro transactions and you got pissy it's got micro transactions period dude understand yep. the definition that's what it is. Yeah, he got so bent out of shape over it, too. I read his twit or tweets or whatever, and it was just like... <laughs> he has a twit. No. His, he is a twit. <laughs> but he was just like, how dare you screw me over in this way? Don't call me out on my own words. <laughs> <laughs> I said nothing. I don't know. He's a moron. The internet never forgets. <laughs> uh, did you hear that there's a new Earthworm Jim game in the works? I did not. I am slightly excited only if, only if they go back to that cartoonish design, you know, make it look like a cartoon again, animated, cell shaded, I don't care, but just make it look like it did on the old <laughs> Super NES because that was impressive back then looking yeah. at a character that looked animated. So uh, just imagine what you could do today. Or if they don't, we'll just complain long enough until they change it before release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe <laughs> because we'll 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 probably talk about that momentarily. It's but been, before it's been entertaining me so. Yeah, but but before we we touch on that, uh, I did want to mention another movie based game is apparently being uh, developed. I'm excited. Is is a Saints Row. Is apparently being developed as a movie from the director of Straight Outta Compton, F. Gary Gray. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure how that will be, but uh, you know, cool. I, I, you know, that could be fun. It could, but don't turn it into one of these movies. It has to cram in every single thing about the game in it. I really feel like, because I've been hearing a lot of early reviews for Detective Pikachu, and I think mm -hmm. that's why it's working so well. They're not trying to cram references down your throat. I think okay. that they just took this idea and the world it exists in and says, how do, do we create an, a movie around this? And then just do it. You know, granted, you're going to have your winks and nods, but it's not just like, I, I, love, I see what we did. Ah. We played a game. Did yeah. You see we played the game and then we put it in here. Just like they did in Doom. And I've heard people oh, yeah. argue that Doom is a great movie, but why did you need that first person shooter scene? Why? All you're doing is just shoehorning in this idea from the game. We don't need that. We I don't. don't know. They probably thought it would be fun fan service or something. I don't know. Like, here's, Do a, here's a nod. <sighs> Just, just hear it. So that's that's I'm all I'm. You, it's just like one of those genres that I've just always been kind of lukewarm towards when people want to make movies out of these games. And just like I mean, because some are okay and then mm -hmm. some are not. It's just eh, I don't know. I the don't only know. one. And if it's such a heavy story based game, I feel like they've already made it. Leave it alone. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Now, see, like to do an Uncharted movie. Like, granted, I still think that would be amazing. Don't get me wrong, but they did it. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. We played it, <laughs> and that's why that's that's why Neil Druckmann said that he doesn't want to do a Last of Us movie because he's like, I told that story, right? I did that, so I was like, yeah, you did, and you did good, so leave mm -hmm. it be. And you did it in the medium you wanted to do it in. Let's call it and, a day. Yeah. And look, I, I mean, I've always argued as far as video game movies are concerned, Mortal Kombat was probably the best one thus far. I'm sure people will argue with me, mm -hmm. but at the time. You had a very basic story. They took a very basic story and just molded something around it. And that was it. Mm -hmm. They didn't try to, to reinvent the wheel or anything like that. They did the basic story. They told it. They gave it a little bit of uh, padding to where it needed to. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty straightforward. They got to fight in a tournament to save the world. Cool. They did it. Done. And then you get the sequel. And all that was, oh, my God, that oh, sequel. Yeah. Was nothing but how many characters can we cram into a movie? How many? All of them. It doesn't matter. Just shove them all in. 
And it was just so much, so much. And it was like, this story has no plot whatsoever. We're fighting for what? Are you kidding me? It has all the plots. (laughs) I mean, there was just some of the... I've probably... I think we've had this rant before. Actually. We have. I'm not even good because I'm sitting here running it through my head. I can some tell. of the I frustrations. Can see the smoke starting to come. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there thinking, I was like, I know I've said this before out loud. So, all right. So forget that. But forget while that. we're while we're on the subject of video game movies, Sonic the Hedgehog oh, finally gosh. saw a trailer come out. Everyone lost their and the mind because hated it <laughs> because Sonic looked weird. And uh, since yeah. then. The film's director said that there are going to be some design changes in the works before the game or before the movie comes out. So something tells me that they took note of somebody who did the job better than them. <laughs> and Several post- people. I kept going. I yeah. kept seeing here's was- their version of Sonic. Here's my version of Sonic. And they were all, they were created some really cool stuff. But it was like, yeah, now that's Sonic. That, yeah, I don't, I don't know what that is. And it was just it, the the one that I saw that I, I really enjoyed looked like Sonic. It yeah. looked like him, but with the the fur and everything. And I was like, how hard was this to do? Why did you have to muscle up his legs and all this other stuff? Just do that. No one's gonna care. He looks I like the character. I, it just kind of makes me wonder because it's like one of those things that you're probably not gonna know until you put it out there anyway, right? Like everyone wants to maybe do something a little bit more unique and different with an idea to make it their own. Mm-hmm. And then but with like gamers, like we're pretty set in our ways. Like this is what was created, this is how it is. Now I'm not a like a huge Sonic fan by any no. stretch of the imagination. <laughs> so I wasn't like really butt hurt about it one way or the other. I will nope. admit I played them growing up. And when I first saw it, I was like, that's strange. Yeah. Like, that's not how I would have imagined it in my head. I didn't lose my mind over it, but, like, it did look weird. It It did look really weird. I think my biggest complaint was, like, he always had on gloves. Why are we making it fur? Like, I mean, it's not a real thing, so who cares? Put the... Sonic exactly. And, Who and I'm, I'm like arguing about a fictional character. I understand this. Like it's never existed. So to say one version of it is wrong over the other. I, I it just but, seems like but, a ridiculous argument. But, but no, I, no, you made you made a good point. I mean, if if it doesn't exist, then why not just do the version that everyone loves? He's why crazy. He loves Sonic. Yeah. yeah, he's not from this world. Put the gloves on him and just do just give fan you knew this was going to happen just give fans the sonic that they wanted no one was going to look at that and be like that is my favorite sonic in the world now he looks nothing like the character the way he's supposed to i'm wondering if he just did did they play the games that's the thing i feel like we're we're missing a lot it's like we're picking directors and all this kind of stuff that like probably aren't gamers Mm -hmm. (laughs) so i feel like with a lot of video game movies that's what always gets lost yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, because they're not capturing, like, the vision of the game with what made us fans about that game in the first place. And and going back to Detective Pikachu, take a look at what they did. They recreated all these Pokemon. All they did was give them texture, give them life, mm-hmm. but they did not in any way, shape, or form stray from the original concept design. So yeah. it shows it can be done, and it looks good. They don't look bastardized. They don't look like I can look at each one and say, oh, I know that one. Oh, I know that one. He just looks more alive Mm -hmm. and not animated. So do that with Sonic. (laughs) It's that simple. Like I said, I think it was one of those things where they thought they'd try to put their own little unique spin on it. And Mm. uh, it backfired. And and let me, I want to touch on but two I other things. But I always try to defend because I'm like, I always like, well, maybe the intentions were good. He just wanted, or she, I don't actually even know who the director is. I think it is a he. Uh, I remember it at one point. I've, I've talked about it, but I, I don't remember at the moment. I will say this in regards to the trailer. One, Jim Carrey looked kind of funny. So he may be the big selling point of the movie, if nothing else. And it seems like going back to Jim Carrey roots. Yeah. And... What the hell was up with that song? Why? Why? I laughed so hard. You, I almost forgot about it. The fact that they used Gangster's Paradise, just like it did. Why? That was one of the first things that I noticed when I'm watching the trailer. I'm like, is that is that Coolio? <laughs> of <laughs> all the, the whole thing. <laughs> of all the music in the world, 
Well, maybe it that's was what you went with. Sonic was new. I don't even remember but when it, the song came out. What? I mean, it's just. I don't know. This is one of those. I was trying to be like, this are is... they even going to use the lyrics? Because will the lyrics even match up? Like this. Like no. Maybe it's one of the da da. I'm not even going to be able to do it. But it's... like, yeah. I, I mean, know. this is this was a situation. I have no doubt that was a boardroom decision, where you had this group of executives at Paramount saying, "We need to make this hip and fresh with the kids. What's cool? Gangsters Paradise. Really? Sure, <laughs> do it." I like that. So really? out of touch. Yeah. So out of touch. I really hope there was that twenty something in the boardroom <laughs> going, uh, I don't uh, even no. know this song. What are you talking about? <laughs> Shut up, Lambert. No one's talking to you. <laughs> You're new. Who's Coolio? You know. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, so yeah. So that that was yeah. that disaster. We'll see where that, that winds up. And uh that's all I got on that. So let's move on to some truth or trash. Okay. And I only have two, and they are actually related. Uh, one, I think, is more of a stretch than the other, but still, I thought it would be fun to, to add in for the sake of adding it wrong. in yeah. because of some things that I heard. Okay. So, uh, the first bit that I have is Grand Theft Auto 6 will feature three massive cities. Each equal to Los Santos from GTA 5 in size. Oh, God, I hope not. I know, everybody just went, what are you talking about? That's amazing. <laughs> we need See, all the I'm open still world. I'm very confused about whether this game is even being made or not. There's a lot of rumors floating around. That there it is. is. Mm-hmm. And I agreed with the, 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 the sentiment that, like, we... It's hard to satirize our life right now. So, mm-hmm. um, because it that's what we live in. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you can't really make this shit up anymore. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to say trash. Okay. That Fair seems. Enough. It ridiculous. seems like a lot, but everyone and, like, wants. I know how long they like to take on things. Red Dead Redemption 2, like, just came out really. I'm, I don't know. Unless we're talking in like 20. 20- 35 or some shit. Don't we know. don't know. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, they may, see. may have been working on this for some time. Who knows? Maybe they have. I feel like they're like, a, we're working on this till we move on type of mm. studio. But what do I know? What do you know? Not and also, much. while we're on the subject of GTA 6, there are rumors circulating that uh, it's going to use some similar concepts and engines from Red Dead 2. So, with that in mind, GTA 6 will feature ball shrinkage. (laughs) Oh, see, now that I hope so. Because, (laughs) my God, did we all lose our minds over the fact that the horse balls changed. Um, But did you really notice... (laughs) I would have never stuck my camera up in there. No, no. but like now that it was brought to my attention, um, I'm going to say trash. Okay. Cause fair I don't, can't fair. I can't for the life of me imagine what we're going to be focusing on balls for. In a Who knows? Red Theft Auto game. No, but that's true. Well, you they'll never, never be know. able to sell it to China. That's all I'm saying. So they better yeah. back. <laughs> you lose back all that on the balls, man. Mm hmm. All right, let's do some weird news. Um, So, Epic Games has faced numerous lawsuits over dance moves in Fortnite, all of which have had no success because you cannot copyright a dance move. We have stated this. It is a fact. But another lawsuit is coming forward with practically the same claim, but with an added wrinkle. Okay, because saxophone player Leo Pellegrino from the band Too Many Zoos that I've never heard of in my entire life. He's claiming that the, quote, phone it in emote is based around his unique dance moves (laughs) because they're holding a saxophone. They're doing the dance. And if you take a look at the emote or the character's feet in the emote. Uh, they're kind of duck-footed, 
and he's duck footed. So, you know, that accounts to the uniqueness of the the move. That is kind of weird. The yeah. duck feet is where I, where you got me where I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird, though, that that had both had to have that saxophone. Yeah, you but know, but no, he's but I'm like, the, why would you do the same? Hmm. But who but, is he, though? Exactly. He, like, epic window exactly. To rip him off. Am I missing something? Leo Pellegrino. Pellegrino. Yep. I've never heard of too many zoos. I've never heard of him. And look, maybe he's got water to stand in, you know, because he's duck footed. <laughs> but I love that you said that his last name is Pellegrino. Sorry, that was in my own head. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all I mean, it's all punny here. <laughs> and uh and sparkling water to say. Mm-hmm. Um okay. But I you yeah, know I'm looking at him, it still doesn't ring a bell. No, it doesn't. I mean the whole thing, I just don't I don't see this. Just stop it. I don't know. Everyone's trying to, to, I feel like someone is trying to make this happen. And if they can make it happen, then it can just open the door. I think the judges just need to stand firm. It's a dance move. It's a dance move. Please don't set that precedent. Like really and truly. I just like, let it go. Mm -hmm. Let it go. Quit filling our court systems with BS lawsuits when there's plenty of other like legitimate things we need to be moving through the court system. We really do. Just let this stuff go. Hey, do you want to buy something for a dollar? Maybe. All right. So maybe I keep I keep trying to find good stuff. No one wanted the the you know twenty eight hundred dollar TV last week. Yeah, that's a little crazy. <laughs> okay, but but this is this is a this is a little bit more reasonable, and okay. uh, I feel like Legend of Zelda merch is usually a guaranteed sale because Nintendo merch works. It's mm-hmm. always awesome. It's it's iconic sometimes. So, say you've got a Zelda shrine room that just needs one more item. Okay. Okay. Might I suggest the official Legend of Zelda Master Sword lamp? Okay. Lamp. Eh? A lamp. Okay. This wonderfully designed piece of lighting is made to look like the Master Sword resting in its base. With the light for the lamp beaming out of said base. So it looks like the scene where Link grabs the sword and the light shines from the base, you know, and it's he's about to pull it out and the light's just glowing out and everything. It's got just it, it's it, just okay. it's recreating that. It really is. Yeah. You're, you're painting a pretty picture. So it's <laughs> this big bright light, the sword and the thing, and I mean that's a pretty amazing piece of furniture, you know. And it can light up your entire room. You just set it right in the middle, and then the light, the shine. I mean, come on. Right, Everybody's yeah. Zelda room needs this lamp. And you can pre-order it right now. <laughs> oh, can I? Yeah. But but how much How, much how you big w- is the lamp? Is it just like a little side lamp? I mean, I, it's a decent-sized lamp. I wouldn't say it's like a floor lamp or anything like that, but it's a lamp size. Is it officially licensed? It is officially licensed. <laughs> Which I realize has no bearing <laughs> on anything anymore. Sometimes it does. It's way too much value in the fact licensed things were more expensive. I'll, I'll say this. Uh, officially licensed Nintendo merch, that's where the price really comes in. For everything else, maybe not so much. But with Nintendo... I'm yeah. starting to see that, yeah. Like, yeah. everything else doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. So, a decent-sized lamp that looks like the Zelda Master Sword... Mm-hmm. And it looks like it is illuminating from the sword. Mm-hmm. And it's officially Nintendo licensed. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say um, 100 bucks, 99.99. Wow. You could buy two. I could now. Yeah. I think it's like a decent size lamp. Okay. Because it's 40. 40- I'm terrible at this game. 45.99. Oh. So uh, get yours looks today. Like, get mine today. It looks like <laughs> I also bought a couple of light bulbs to go with it. Right. I guess I should have looked that up to uh, what kind of bulbs it uses, oh, but it's yeah. it's really really bright. It is okay. Well, it had better be. And you can use batteries, or you can plug it up with a USB cord because that's popular these days. Oh, it doesn't it doesn't plug into the wall. Well, I'm sure you could get a. a are, are gone are the days for electrical outlets? Um. All right, let's do some release dates. On May 7th, we have Shakedown Hawaii for PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and PC. For The King for Xbox One. European Conqueror for Nintendo Switch. Brief Battles for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. 
Puyo Puyo Champions for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Reverse Crawl for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Car Mechanic Manager for Nintendo Switch. That sounds boring, but what do I know? Mm. Uh, on May 8th, we have Adventures of Bertram Fiddle, Episode 1, The Dreadly Business for Xbox One. Meow Motors for Nintendo Switch. And The Legend of Tetra Arcs for Xbox One. Then on May 9th, you were kind of talking about this, Yakuza Kiwami 2 for PC. Thank you. I was trying to remember which one was coming out here soon. Uh On two PC. Uh, Life is Strange 2, Episode 3, Wastelands for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Dragon Ball Fighter Z, Dragon Ball GT Goku. That's a mouthful. We're going to say that's a DLC because that's what it sounds like. For PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Masquerada Songs and Shadows for Nintendo Switch. For the King for Nintendo Switch. Frayne, Dragon's Odyssey, Monster Puzzle, and Lost Artifacts, Soulstone, all for the Nintendo Switch. Then on May 10th, we have Saints Row the Third, the full package for Nintendo Switch. Ascendance First Horizon for Xbox One Nintendo Switch. Dragon Ball or Dragon Pinball for Nintendo Switch. Super Space Serpent Secondary Edition for Xbox One. Lovecraft's Untold Stories for Nintendo Switch. Dragon Fang Z, The Rose and Dungeon of Time. The Rose and Dungeon of Time. Hmm. Hmm. Xbox One. I don't know, some of these titles. <laughs> yeah. And then Blazing Beaks and My Big Sister for the Nintendo Switch. And then finally, on May 12th, we have the Nintendo Labo Toy Con VR Kit for the Nintendo Switch. We've all been waiting. Yes, eagerly awaiting this thing that it may or may not be. Uh, Then we have the Xbox Games with Gold for May. Uh, For Xbox One, you have uh, Marooners, which will be available from May 1st to 31st. Then the Golf Club 2 featuring PGA Tour. That's a terrible title. For Xbox One from May 16th to June 15th. Then for your 360 titles, which can also be played on the Xbox One, we have Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon from the 1st to the 15th of May, and Comic Jumper from May 16th through the 31st. There, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's just so hard. This date thing that they do, I don't, I don't understand yeah, it. Yeah, like, I don't know what's going on there either. Make it the entire month like PlayStation. By the way, PlayStation games for mm. May... <laughs> Uh, segue. Mm-hmm. These are just for the PlayStation 4, uh, since they've done away with PlayStation 3 and Vita for now. So, if you if you did not hear that, you're hearing it now again for the second or third time. Mm-hmm. Only PlayStation 4 games, but they are two good ones. One I have been wanting to get for some time, so I'm a little excited. Mm-hmm. Uh, Overcooked. Which is not the game that I wanted, but I would probably play it. It's a that. fun game, though. Yeah, you I would and play Katrina it. all have a good time with that man. I mean, you totally should. Free? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would play it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and also, What Remains of Edith Finch. So, that's also the one I've been looking for. Yeah. So, excellent. I have played that. I have been wanting to play it. It's in VR, too, apparently. I've not tried it in VR, but... Hmm. Interesting. Do you want to play a little bit of Name That Game? I'm terrible at this, you've discovered already. I don't know. I don't know. It's not the Family Feud theme, but, you know, we'll we'll, (laughs) we'll manage. It's whatever game show song pops into my head every time we do it. It's fine. Okay, so. All right. I got five for you. And I think, I think I did good this time. Okay. Now, there is a, now. I think last time when I did this, some of the titles were actual PC games. This time, only one is the actual title, and everything else is something I made up. Oh. So, you have ah. to really think. And I'm hoping I, I've done a good enough job in creating titles that you'll sit there and have to really think on. So we'll see how well I did. Because if you get all five right, then I've done a terrible, terrible job. <laughs> well, we already know. Uh, okay, so just remember, what are my instincts? Go against them. Got it. Right, right. I'm prepped. 
Okay, the first game, this is a game in which your mission is to guide a family of ducks through outer space by strategically placing a trail of breadcrumbs. But you must look out for dangerous space foxes and black holes that will try to stop you from getting the ducks home to Earth. So, is it A, Mission Mallet? Howard the Duck. No. Okay. Is it A, Mission Mallard, B, Bills of Breadcrumbs, C, Quack to Earth, or D, Homeward Duck? They're all fantastic names, by the way. <laughs> um, I feel like B, because it's just so blatantly obvious, Bills to Breadcrumbs. Mm-hmm. I'm probably wrong, but I'm going with it. B. You're wrong. It's, it it's was Mallard, ain't it? D. Homeward Duck. Damn it! <laughs> Yay! I did good. <laughs> Let's see if it can continue my streak. That was the only one that I was like, "Nah, that seems too dull." Nah. All right, change your name. The other <laughs> names were better. <laughs> All right, the next game. Your job in this logic puzzle game is to custom craft each ball into a specific order. You've got the tools you need to fulfill each order except the instruction manual. In each level, you'll see a target design of your ball on a shipping box. Starting from a plain white ball, get to work by clicking the tools you want to use and try to manufacture the correct ball. Perfect if you enjoy a cerebral challenge or are keen for a mental workout. Is it A, build a ball, B, factory balls, C, ball handler, or D, straight line of balls? (laughs) Oh, I love it all. Um, What was the first one? Build a ball. Build a ball or factory balls. Ball handler. Straight line of balls. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's factory ball. You are correct. Hey! Yeah. I went with the one that sounded the least creative in that case. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I was like, I think they would just call something factory ball. Undone by my own petard. (laughs) All right. So the next game we have, and also keep in mind, uh, a lot of this is actually pulled from their descriptions. I've just maybe reworked it to sound a little bit more poppy. Ah. Okay. So hire Steven for your PR. Sure. Some call them freaks. Others call them monsters. For many, they don't even know they exist at all. Forced to live on the fringes of society, they have no reason to care about the rest of humanity or its affairs. However, everything changes when a powerful and ancient evil force threatens our world. A group of these legendary outcasts must join forces to take a stand against evil and save the universe. Come join the Chosen and fuel our flame against evil as you play as one of the mighty fighters like the Sasquatch and the Yeti and other monsters that I didn't quite look into, but, you know, those are some of the choices you have. Uh, And battle across epic landscapes. Challenge the forces of darkness or oppose the forces of good. Which side will you choose? Is it... A, Supernatural Super Squad Fight. B, Mega Monster Madness. C, Colossal Creature Coliseum. Or D, Legends and Myths. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, D. Stick with that. Yes, I know my face doesn't exude the confidence. <laughs> You're wrong. It was uh, A. Oh, I oh, see, I honestly was going A D in my head. Supernatural Damn. super squad fight. 
Supernatural, Super Scott. That just seemed like a mouthful, but I yeah, should. Yeah, it was. Wow. All right. Next game. This is a simulation game that you can experience a psychological battle between humans and werewolves. Hearing a rumor that horrible murders are repeated in a village in the middle of nowhere, you visit the site. Apparently how they got killed are not a human's doing. Is this A, the Lycan Strangler, B, Wolf or Boy, C, Werewolf Mysteries, or D, the Brutal Murders of Wolfsbane Hollow? I like the name of that. (laughs) Screw it. I'm going to go with D just because I like it. You're wrong. It's B. (laughs) Wolf or boy. Damn it. (laughs) I'm like, I like that one. It sounds like Wolf Among Us kind of vibes. I was like, hopefully it's that game. I like it. it, though? What was the actual name? Wolf or boy. See, the most dull one of them all. Guys, listen to Steven. Let him name your game. They should. <laughs> All right. I'd be so much more intrigued. Next one I've got. Actually, I think I've got two more. I thought Magic. I only had five. Okay. Well, we'll do that. I've got two more. All right. Well, you probably planned on Todd being here. Yeah, I did. By the way. Yeah. We miss you, bro. Mm-hmm. All right. The next game. A bee hatches in the hive, but something's wrong. Born different from the others, the bee is exiled from the hive and forced to survive the world on its own. That is, until a bird attacks and eats it. But that's only the beginning. Inside the bird, all of the bugs that it eats are brainwashed and put to work in a fantastical mechanical factories that exist in the place of its organs, except for the outcast bee whose very disability prevents them from being brainwashed. The bee takes it upon itself to destroy the massive bird from the inside out and free all the enslaved critters within. (laughs) I just like, it's a lot of information. Yeah. So, is this... So, a bee got eaten by a bird. Done. Yeah. Bee was eaten by a bird. (laughs) Apparently, the the bird has a working factory enslaving or enslaving all the the bugs that it's eaten and then the bee's gonna rescue them all because it's got a defect okay so is this a flappy stomach b bird hive c bird gut or d i thought it was a worm Ah, i like that too but don't trust my instincts. Every time I like a name, it's wrong. B, bird hive. You're wrong. It was C, bird gut. Damn it. I was really hoping it wasn't bird gut. Damn it. Your name's... Okay, I shouldn't... I know. My bad. names... Your names are bad. I know. I'm sorry. I try to do so much good no, in the yours are good is what I'm saying. Like the actual name, I go, nah, all right. <laughs> All right, and the last one I've got, and I, I really worked on this to get some good names. Okay. So the, the crappiest name of the bunch. Got it. No. <laughs> <laughs> get ready for the most cooperative game ever. Oh. This action-packed co-op twin stick shooter is meant to be played with your best bud or your significant other. One player controls the right arm. The other controller controls the left arm. Both of you control the movement. For what purpose, you may ask? You and your partner were the best cops in the greater metropolitan area until a horrific pontoon boat accident nearly killed you. Oh, good God. The police department took half of each of your mangled bodies and combined them together using the latest technology to save your lives, combining you into one super cop. Now, you and your partner must now control half of the same body, so you really need to be in sync with one another if you're going to survive. Oh, man. This is a very popular thing nowadays, the whole body controlling, like, Manuel Samuel and uh, Noah played other games like this. Oh, yeah, is that making a little resurgence here? Yeah. So, is this 
A, Officer Deuce. B, Badge of Arms. C, Gemini Justice. Or D, Twin Cop. I like Gemini Justice. That's good. That's good. Um, I don't... Okay. Hmm. What was... B was Badge Cops or Badge, badge of Arms? Badge of Arms. Badge of Arms. Hmm. See, I kind of like that one, too. I'm putting way too much pressure on myself. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to uh, deuce. No, that was pretty good, too. Gemini. I like that. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm, badge of arms. It was twin cop. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so you only got I'm one. I'm hoping a little bit that they would go a little creative. So twin cop. Aw, but see, they're not twins. But they they aren't, no. But they're a twin no. cop now. Sort of. They, they are, I, I guess. guess. I don't know. Gemini Justice, though, is good. Gee. I thought so. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we are actually going to kick it over to a, a little segment we did uh, yes. before the show. We should have brought it up earlier. We should have, but, you know, yeah, it's, it's on the icon. It's on the descriptions. Hopefully that's why yes. people are here. Uh, we did an interview with uh, Edwin Jack, who you yeah. got to meet at PAX East. At PAX East, yeah. I unfortunately missed out. I, I met someone else um, from the team, but they, they uh, were the developers of the game Seed, which we spoke about at PAX East. And mm -hmm. um, we got to speak to him about the game and what was going on <laughs> and things uh, that they're working towards. So uh, yeah, we're going to kick it over to that interview right now. All right, guys, we are speaking with Edwin Jack, who is the founder of Bearhand Games and the developer of the indie game Seed, which we actually spoke about while we were at PAX East. Now, when we did we actually meet? Because I couldn't remember. I remember I talked to one of the guys down there who was, who was showing me through the game or anything like that. But did, did we officially meet? Uh, I, you know, I think it might have been Chris, um, the concept artist mm -hmm. that you met. Um, it was either Chris or Manny. Manny, Manny, Manny. yeah, that, yeah, that name, that name rings a bell. Yeah, yeah. So, and then I, when I got back, he had, uh, he had so told me and gave me the card. Uh, so I was like, oh, okay, you know, great, because you know, mm -hmm. you know, Pax, man, it's all, it's all type of stuff going on. Oh, there's so many people. Yeah, so much going on. Yeah. Now I know so I got to talk on. to you while I was there, so I, I do know that. Yeah. There are several. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it was. It's it's a hectic show for sure. So you see so many faces, you don't know who you met and who you didn't meet, and so I just wanted to clarify because I was like, I, I don't remember if I actually got to meet you, but Manny, mm -hmm. that that name does ring a bell for me. So yeah, and he is he's the concept artist or the other guy. Manny is a, a programmer. Programmer, okay. Yeah, yeah. So may uh, the uh, Chris is the concept artist. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, how long has this game actually been in development? Seed has been in development for four years. It started, we started, uh, we started pre-production in about 2015. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, that was around the time I, I, I started Bear. I started Bear Hand around, I, I believe, the end of 2014. And I started doing prototypes, paper prototypes and things like that um, at the end of the year. And uh, that's when we really started, you know, I had the idea for it. Um, I just had, yeah, I had the idea for it and I started to really flesh it out with Chris. Um, and we just started moving forward from there. So have you guys known each other a long time then? Yeah, yeah, I've known Chris, man. I've known him since college. Well, that was just last uh, year. Look at you. Nah, nah shoot, man. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I graduated college in like 2011, 
Um, no, I wasn't that far and, off. Well, it is 2019. Yeah, yeah, it's, not, it's not that. Yeah, it's not that. Not that far off, but but yeah, I graduated to eleven. Um, and so I've known him most of my college, like mo- most of my college years. And then, uh, you know, we just kept in contact. We had a lot of the same values mm-hmm. uh, in terms of work ethic and why we work and all that stuff. So, um, you know, we were always like talking about game ideas or anime ideas and stuff like that. So a perfect union. Now, be- before you, you got into or started Bare Hand Games, you, you worked for WB Games, correct? Yes, yes. I um, So they have a they have a division uh called uh turbine Mm -hmm. and that's that's pretty much wb boston gotcha so i i yeah i worked there as an animator what games did you work on specifically um i worked on lord of the rings online oh no kidding they had at the time they had uh the helms deep expansion coming out uh, so i was an animator i was working on a lot of the the characters and uh, I worked on uh, like some some in game cutscenes and things like that, um, spells, attacks, um, all type of stuff. That's nice, yeah. Interesting. Now, what what actually pushed you out of there and into the indie scene? Um, well, so at that at that time, um, uh, uh, the the company had like a, a they had a layoff. And, uh, you know, I was a part of that way, but I was a contractor. Um, you know, they did tell me, you know, um, that there is, that there's no guarantee that I would be extended beyond my contract. Um, but, um, but yeah, so they had that layoff and, you know, um, I was a part of that wave. And then that's when I, that's when I had to leave. Um, and I was, you know, I was, I'm not from Massachusetts, mm. so I had I had like I was like, man, uh, I'm all the way out here. I'm from Maryland. Um, what am I gonna do? You know, um, and, and and in Mass at the time there wasn't too many like irrational irrational game um, games was I think they had just shut down too. Wow. Um, and there weren't many two other options other than like Harmonix and um, and like a few other studios here. So, you know, the option, the other option is to move, right? I mean, that's just the nature of the industry, especially if you're not on the West Coast. Um, so, so yeah, you know, that was the situation with that. Hey, bread out of necessity and start your own thing. Yeah, because you know what? Like, you know, it was a lot of friends that I had that that were laid off. They were they were you know full time, um, and I was really I was more sad for them because I was like, dang man, like like you know these these guys have families, you know they have homes, mortgages and whatnot. One guy he just bought a house, yeah. like he had just bought a house. And I was like, dang, like, you know, I really hope he finds something. Myself, I'm single, you know, I didn't I didn't have any kids or anything like that. So I'm like, you know, if I got to get up and go, it's not that big of a problem for me. Um, but I just thought about it, man. And I was just like, man, I was like, yo, I really feel like the East Coast could be, you know, we 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 have a lot of passion over here and we have people you know, developing stuff. But the scene is not as big as the West Coast, and there's not enough jobs. Um, they, you know, and then all all of the biggest, the biggest events and stuff happen over there. So I was like, man, I'm gonna start something over here. I'm gonna start something on the East Coast. Um, and I said, I'm not gonna move because I had already moved several times. I lived in Cali. Um, that was when I graduated. I actually moved. I actually went out to GDC to try to find work, um, and I was out there for a week. And, um, you know, went to the career fair and just like pretty much slept there. I applied for all, almost every company there. I didn't get anything. Um, and I was just kind of bumming on my, my cousin's couch, you know, just and, and bringing food in the house. Um, but, you know, I had lived out there. I came back, moved back to Maryland. Then I moved to New York. 
and I was just kind of moving a lot. And so in that time, when I when I when I faced the layoff, I was just like, man, I I, I don't want to move again. Like, and I think I'm just gonna plant my feet where I'm at, um, even though the situation looks ugly right now. I was like, I'm just gonna plant my feet where I'm at and try to make it work. And so I started the company in Mass. Nice. Bare hand, the name that you you have is that your company. What I actually read about it on the on your website, but explain to everyone else why bare hand. Why bare hand? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, so bear, so I I was when I was thinking of the company, like the, the the name of the company, I was just like. I was like, you know, I was coming up with all these all type of stuff like rising games and I try to spell it differently and <laughs> and like, you know, R Y, you know, an R I S or, or whatever. Right. And I was just like, man, this just sounds super corny. I'm like, I'm not feeling <laughs> I'm not feeling this, yo. I was like, I'm not feeling this. I sent it to my buddy. I was like, yo, you know, I was doing the logo at the time. I was doing the you know, the line with the line. Mm-hmm. And and I was like, bro, what you think, man? And you know, he was like, oh, no, nah, it's cool, it, it's cool. I think it's cool, bro. But he 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 wasn't feeling the the title either. The logo, the, the logo, the line, he was feeling more, and I was feeling that more. So anyway, um, bare hand is something me and my friends is, would say like growing up. Like like if you had a job interview. Um, you know, if you had a job interview, you'd be like, yo, bro, you got to bare hand that job interview, man. Like, don't let, don't get scared. Don't get nervous. Like, bare hand that, bro. You got that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if it was like, if it was like, you know, you was going to the gym and, and, you know, you trying to, you trying to get, uh, 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 get some extra reps in, or you trying to, you know, get stronger or whatnot, you trying to beat your results. Like, bro, yo, when you go in the gym, make sure you bare hand, man. Like, you know, <laughs> Like yeah. don't be going in, don't be going in there weak, man. Go in there and bare hand, bare hand them results. And so you know, it was it was always something that we would say, and we all knew what it meant, um, you know, and, and we all knew what it meant, but like we didn't like give it an official official definition, but we knew when we said it, we knew what we were, we were right. saying. And so um, you know, I sat there, and when I was. They trying to think of the names and stuff. I said, "Yo, I want to call it bare hand." I was like, "Cause that's I feel like so, that's something that's that's real deep, deep and close to me." And you know, it's a term that we use, and it's a term that we live by. You know, um, it's like it's like one 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 character that we that we always felt like bare handed uh, in games was Kratos from God of War. We like, "Yo, Kratos, he like he goes in and he just bare hands. He just." <laughs> He just like he don't cry about nothing. He's like, yo, like, you know, I'm Kratos, and he's just bare hands. Whatever he got to do, he does it, and he gets it done. And that's yeah. like definition of bare hand. And even you know, and then it, at the same time, it's also you know, I've I've never been a fan of gunfire or, or uh, firearms, and so you know, I've always loved martial arts and and you know, the different different martial artists in the world. And I'm like, man, you know, it also represents the physical part of it, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, man, I'm like this, everything in terms of my values, um, you know, connects to this. So I I wrote it, I wrote it out, you know, I had, had some fonts and I wrote it out and I said, yo, this is it. Like, this makes sense right here. Like, and I feel it, you know, yeah. all this other stuff, it was corny. I didn't, I wasn't feeling it. And it was more personal to you. Yeah. Right. It's more personal. And I'm like, I feel like, I feel like every human being has had to bare hand something at one point in their life, whether it be an illness, like, you know, like I I have somebody in my family that has Crohn's and, you know, she, she has learned to overcome challenges after challenge after challenge with that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, she bare hand in like them Crohn's. The Crohn's is not bare hand in her. She bare hand in the Crohn's. Yeah. And so, you know, or it may be like, oh, you know, you're trying to buy a house or, you know, or you're trying to, you're, you're dealing with a difficult move or, you know, you just got laid off. 
man, what do you what do you do about that? And like, all right, well, I'm not gonna sit here and cry about it. I got a bare hand this. Mm-hmm. So um, I love and it. now, yeah. So that's how that's how bare hand came about. Like I said, I did the logo and and uh, I sent that to my buddy. He was like, "Yo, that's it." He was like, "I feel like it. that's the hardest thing to nail is a logo." So I'm really impressed to hear that you already had that down, and then you're like working the name around it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, that's the I, hardest yeah. thing to nail down. Yeah, I had the symbol. I, I already had the you know the symbol in my head. Like I already had it. Like mm-hmm. I, I, it was a part of the vision. Like you know, I saw it in my mm-hmm. head. So I'm like, "Yeah, no, nah, that's good." I said the thing is the the title, and it was the same thing. It was the same thing with Seed too. Like mm. Seed wasn't called Seed at first. Oh yeah. I, I don't know if you know that, but Seed wasn't called Seed. Seed was called. We called it. I called it Big Boy Little Boy. Oh, I think and, maybe I do remember someone mentioning yeah. that at the booth now. Like I overheard yeah. the conversation. Yeah, yeah, it was called Big Boy Little Boy and and uh, the co- idea behind that was big, you know, big fish, small fish. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, government or and then citizen and father son. And that was the idea that I had for giving it that. And mm-hmm. it was also like John, you know, cuz the goal of the main character, he's big, he's a big guy, but mm-hmm. then you got the little guys. Mm-hmm. And so they're both important. And so we had named it that, but you know, uh, we we reached out to Big Boy the rapper because you know there was we didn't want to get sued. Sure. So we, in this we day did, and age, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just don't like, steal bro. any dances, man. Apparently, that's where you're really gonna go sideways these oh, days. Oh <laughs> yes! Wow. So. Yeah, I reached out to him. Uh, I reached out to to him on Twitter, and then I reached out to his his manager, and it was just like the manager was like, "Well, we not." He said, "Unfortunately, we can't have you use the name." And I was like, "Yeah, we're changing the title." Don't I think I like Seed through. better anyway. I think it's just nice, yeah. neat, simple. You know, a yeah. little bit more makes you interested. To well, what does that mean? What is that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It it all worked out. You mm-hmm. know, it's all aligned. So, so yeah. So, Seed, is that Bear Hand's first official game? Yes, yes, this is our first official game. Okay, I happened to see on the website there was another game yeah. listed underneath uh, your game's like Hardlander. Hardlander, and, yeah. But I noticed it was developed by one of your other team members, so I wanted to, to clarify that. Yeah, yeah, so Hardlander, Hardlander is developed by Nick Biondi, um, and uh, he, he is the founder of of Solarius games. And I had met Nick uh, like a little bit after I found it bare hand and he was already working on that. And so um, he was like, well, yeah, man. He was like, let's work on something new, you know, let's work on something. And and I had shared my my vision with, with, with Seed and then we went from there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I like, when I met him and I played that game, like, it was so fun. Like I was like, "Wow, this is amazing!" Like it's an it's addictive. Mm-hmm. And then I went to events with him, like in Portland, Oregon, and at the Pick Squad, uh, the Portland Indie Game Squad. And you would just see like four people always on the screen, and I'm like, "Wow!" I'm like, "This game is really like, yeah, it's fun. Like people love this." So I told him, I was like, "Bro, I'll bring this back to the East Coast and take it to our events." Mm-hmm. And so he was like, "Yo, I appreciate that, man." So, you know, I was kind of, uh, I was just helping, I was just marketing, helping market him market the game. And at the time, he didn't have a website. So uh, I put the, put it on our website. And, um, you know, when people would ask me at conventions or events that I bring it to, they say, where can I go look at it or whatever? And I would send them to our website and say, oh, yeah, you know, you can check it out here. It's awesome. Excellent. Okay. Now, as I uh, mentioned up top, we got to play Seed at mm-hmm. PAX, but I, I'm I, I'm not sure that we actually <laughs> nailed down no. what the mechanics were. I was uh, not so, good. So for <laughs> everyone listening, you tell them yes. what is Seed? Like, what what's the core gameplay mechanics behind it? Because it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. But I don't think we did it justice like you could. Okay, yeah, cool, no problem. Um, all right, so... The first thing, like, when people pick up the game, 
and they and they find out how to punch, that's what a lot of people start doing, right? It's punching everything. Punch, 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 punch. Because, you know, it has that it has that brawler uh beat 'em up like like feel for some people. Mm-hmm. Um and so, you know, they think like, oh, okay, you know, I have like and which you will have different attacks with with Seth. Um but most people feel like it's it's that. But the thing is, when we developed the game, we would develop the game, um, started developing the game, we said, all right, you know, there's already hundreds of games out there that do this, that you go through, punch, 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 jump, do this, smash the ground, pick up, throw this, mm-hmm. like, you know, just brawling. Mm-hmm. So we said, you know, we want to bring some, we want to bring a unique flavor to that. Um, even though I love those games, um, if we're going to stand out and this being our first company and our first game, um, we got to stand out. Mm-hmm. And so we, um, you know, we did a lot of research and um, and then also based on our values, uh, because our game is founded on our faith and, and our company is founded on our faith. Um, and so, you know, the main character is actually based off of Joseph from the book of Genesis in the Bible. And Joseph, he was a farmer. And so we took that and we put that in the game. And okay. and so we said, all right, how do we combine action and, and, and farming? Because we, we did a survey and a lot of people told us why they didn't like farming games. A lot of people told us why they didn't like um, action games. You know, people like, oh, farming games are so tedious. You know, action games, most action games don't have, like, a lot of action games don't have great story. You know, you just go in whacking stuff and then they come up with some crappy story. Right. Just to fill it. So we combined it. We said, all right, why not make the action based off of your plants? And so, you know, when you destroy monsters, the monsters burst into seeds. And they become your your crops, your plants. Now, here's the unique mechanic in seed. When you destroy a monster, they become um, there's a drop rate in which they can become a sprout. Okay, mm-hmm. that sprout, you run one of your little boys over to the sprout. They nurture the sprout, and the sprout becomes pretty much a turret, like in a tower defense game. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, and so. That turret, depending on which little boy nurtures, uh, let's say Ray Ray, uh, the red-headed one, mm-hmm. if he nurtures, you get an attack turret, uh, which we call a defender plant. If Flo, she nurtures, you get a you get a healing plant, a supporter plant. Um, you know, supporter plants do anything from heal you, speed you up, uh, boost your stats. And so we said, your strength should come from plants. And so when a lot of people play, they go in and they go and swing it and they lose. And they're like, wow, this is hard. And I said, well, no, you're not using your plants. Yeah. And and but like I know that, I was having a hard time utilizing that, too. I think you came over and you're like, you know, if you carry that because it was yeah. the healing thing, because I couldn't figure out right. like I wasn't getting any healing drops or anything like that. Oh, yeah. OK. You know, Yeah. exactly. Exactly. Oh, wow. So we, you know, and and the, one of the one of the we. We had a build we were testing out on the right screen at PAX that had a tutorial, and then we had a build on the left side that didn't have the tutorial. So the build on the left side was one of our older builds, and it just had these cards at the beginning. And so a lot of people, you know, they, you know, go through the cards because they want to get to the game, which is understandable. Um, and so, um, you know, we, we just on our recent build that we're working on now have a tutorial to teach people that because the mechanic is so, is, is so unique. It's, mm-hmm. it's fresh, really you is. know? Um, and, and, and then like, it's not a tower defense game because a tower defense, you're staying in one spot and you're guarding like a shrine or something like that. Mm-hmm. But in our game, you, you're actually traveling through a, a world and you're growing plants and you know, you're, you're beautifying this world and the plants that you grow, you can pick up and take with you mm-hmm. um, and move them around to guard the areas that you've, that you've made p- pretty much pretty and move forward. Um, so that is like the main mechanic, the monsters churn into plants that help you fight back. You can move the plants around mm-hmm. um, dynamically. 
you'll be able to pick up more than one plant in our in uh in future builds. Oh, okay. Um and uh you know, we're looking to have like the little boys be able to pick them up as well, um, because we're looking to implement uh co op multiplayer. Oh, um, that would be so, neat. So yeah. Um, you could think of the little boys like you could think of it as like a class system. The the Seth is the attack and tank, uh, the, the really the damage dealer. The little boys don't deal as much. They don't deal damage like that, but they are nurturers, and they're different type of nurturers. You have like maybe your white mage nurturers, which is flow to give you all the support. You have your black mage nurturer, which is Ray Ray to give you attack attack plants. And so it'll really like really uh, uh, focus everything on the plants because Seth can't he can't get health back unless there's plants. Mm -hmm. and, and if there's like 10 enemies, then he's going to get overwhelmed. He needs help from the plants. So everything is centered on the plants and even how you win, um, you, you're filling up this this meter at the bottom right, uh, which gives you the golden seed. Uh, which is pretty much your your end result to to areas in the, in the in the game. Yeah, I Excellent. loved it. So see, I think I had just started to catch on to that by the time I moved on because other people were wanting to play the game. Where I was like picking up the plant, let me move it over here, get this area green, and I would see the enemies would start to trash the area I had already thought I had taken care of. I'd pick that one back up, try to help go protect it. I still didn't quite get through that first level, but I think I was just starting to understand, understand yeah. what the game was wanting me to do um right. so i'm i'm looking forward to uh getting my hands back on it for sure yeah yeah um you know a lot of a lot of people don't feel bad because like i said it's it's not a common like it's not a common oh, no, it's a very unique concept and, for sure and so a lot of people like they take a second to get it because they're like oh okay because mm -hmm. so, I did the know, same thing, just like go in there smacking everything around. Like, yeah, I got yeah. this. <laughs> Why is there so many more of them coming now? I don't understand. Right, <laughs> you know? right. But yeah, it was fun. Yeah, definitely the combat farming was very unique. Even when they, they asked, I think Manny asked me, he said, have you ever heard of combat farming? I'm like, no, that, I've never heard that before in my life. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was like some unique concept that had not yet caught on but other people were doing it but you guys are the first so yeah you may you may want to try to find a way to kind of you know tie it down a little bit because if it catches on people are going to start replicating it and you'll have a Fortnite thing on your hand <laughs> everybody's doing that <laughs> well at least we're leaving traces of who did it first right right well you know you know what like I used to be scared of that. You know, I used to really fear that. I used to tell my team, like, man, we got to finish this game. We got to finish this game, man. Somebody going to copy. Somebody uh -huh. going to, man, like this combat farming, like, ain't nobody doing this, bro. Somebody going to see it. Somebody going to try to take it. Right. Somebody with money, you know, <laughs> with, with, a, with a $10 million budget or whatever, they could just hire 100 people and finish it before us. I used to be scared of that, but now I'm not. Because the thing is, you know, the vision's here. You know what I mean, and and it, and as long as I'm as I'm grinding and my team is grinding, there's always like fresh and new things that we come up with to make the game like stand out. I I honestly feel like, uh, and I ain't gonna say no names, but I feel like there's a game out there. Um, there's a couple games out there that um, I didn't see those games uh, before we did like our Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. And we did our Kickstarter, and we started really blasting it out there, and, and it started getting a little notice and, our, and a little bit of press. And then I started seeing these games come out, and and they, they, those games play like our old build during the Kickstarter. So I'm like, hmm. I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> Nobody was doing this combat farming thing yeah. before us, so... I'm like, but we changed the mechanics from since our Kickstarter and it the game plays and it plays a lot better because the challenge of mixing a farming game and an action game, we didn't want to just take two separate games and just put it in a game. Right. You know, we wanted to say the two have to, they have to combine and they have to work together. And at first the game played like that. It just played like you were, we had two 
two different games. Go beat a guy up, go over with a shovel, plant your... Go over with a shovel. Yeah, yeah. That's how, okay. it, that's how it was. Yeah. And we said, nah, man, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be like this. It, it's, 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 that's, that's still got the tedious aspect and, and it doesn't feel like the two are in there and they're, that they're working together. It just feels like they're inside and they're just like, oh, well, well, I see you over there action. Oh, I see you over there farming. And people are just <laughs> doing this separate thing. Yeah. So, um, but I'm not, I'm no longer scared of that because I'm like, you know, like, you know, we're individuals, you know, we're given, we're given these dreams and these visions, you know, like, like Walt Disney was given his vision and Steve Jobs was given his vision. And it's like, no matter who tried to copy, he had his brain and what, what his vision was. And that's why Apple, you know, is Apple. Right. And so that's why Disney is Disney. So it's like, for me, I'm like, you know, I just got to keep working and I just got to keep grinding and they're not going to, and if anybody tried to emulate or whatever, they're not going to be able to keep up with everything that we're dropping, you know? Yeah. And so like, even now, like, you know, there's things, there's things that like in my head or the team that we've had meetings about that we want to put in a game um, that we haven't yet. And we're like, man, when they see this, they going, you know, they, they have no idea. Like when they see the, the, these new mechanics and these new things we're going to put in there, and so, you know, I'm re- I'm really excited about that, you know. So it's it's just keeping the grind going with that stuff and you know, you won't be able to keep up and copy. Right. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, if it if it's going to be the big hit that I think it might be, then, you know, 2021 we're going to see Call of Duty combat farming. <laughs> <laughs> right, hey, they right. finally That's put boots true. back on the ground, right? So we just got to right. really get in that dirt. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, eh, you know, I mean, uh, that's cool. Like if you it know, happens, yeah. <laughs> they could do that if they want, you know, but, you know, we the originators and, and you know, we always going to be coming out with a, a fresh and unique stuff. So, mm. oh, that's great. Now, did w- while y'all were at PAX and uh, I guess any other game shows that you've been at, have you gotten any good feedback about the game? In terms of like, um, like bugs or anything or 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 you talking about feedback just as in just like people liking the game or i guess more about the mechanics of the game like is there anything you can improve anything you can do that that might make it more appealing anything like that 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 you've never really thought about uh that i never thought about um i mean I feel like with so many different personalities too, with something so unique, it's probably hard to remember all the different (laughs) things that people probably throw at you. So many different people. Um, There's not really anything that that comes to mind off the bat that, that, uh, that I felt like someone suggested that was really unique or that I felt was viable, viable to put in the game. Mm -hmm. Um, um, but I mean, generally a lot of people, when they understand the combat farming, um, they, you know, they're super hyped, like, because they're like, wow, I could, you know, they're imagining a full game, like a right. full game with a story. Um, and then a lot of people ask, oh, is this going to be co-op? I think the one thing that, that, that people asked about is PVP, um, and then, okay. and then the, and then the PVP possibilities, um, and I think that was the one thing that, that kind of, uh, that I didn't, it was some aspects that people suggested to me about PVP that I didn't think about. Um, and you know, first, first and foremost, we want to make a campaign, uh, a campaign mode, uh, cause we feel like we have a very powerful, um, message and, um, to tell in the game and, and story. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, that's, we want to do that first and foremost, but we are, you know, open to a PVP mode. Um, so I think that's the one thing that, that, you know, kind of opened my perspective in, in, in terms of what the game could be, uh, people suggesting PVP, um, modes and, and not, it's Um, huge right now. People want to play with their friend all over the place. Yeah. But you know, I grew up on I grew up on playing games on you know local co-op. Mm-hmm. You know, like you know my mom's or you know like oh you you know 
I invite you invite so and so over, or I would go over. She would drop me over at my friend's house, and then he we would have like four of us on one screen, you know, playing this at this action adventure game or this action RPG, and you know, we're just having so much fun. Oh, like, for sure. I just missed that like experience. So and then the internet happened. And then the internet. <laughs> happened. So, but I feel yeah. like local multiplayer. I feel like it's coming back, and I see it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, not that we don't want C to be online, but. Uh, we want that. We want to be able to uh, provide that campaign experience where you know you can have your friend hop in, press pause, and join in as a little boy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we want to be able to provide that experience. I think um, what a lot of people suggested, and this is already something that we were like, yeah, we're definitely going to put that in the game. Uh, wanting to pick up more plants because you can only pick up one mm -hmm. right now, and so we, you know, we're trying to decrease that that tedious factor um so so you know we want to be able to enable to pick the player to pick up you know at least three to four plants and then the little boys be able to pick up plants and then you have the seth and the little boys carrying these group of plants that you could just bam 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 put them around without going pick up put down pick up put down you know sure so so yeah i think in terms of feedback that's what some people really wanted um they wanted that with the with the mechanic that we have well, just tell them you've put a pin in it, and once we get the the main game down, that's something you, if you want to, of course. Oh yeah, no, yeah. it's coming. You know that's yeah. that that's something that's coming. We we we're well aware of it. Um, you know, we play tested. We like, man, you should definitely be able to pick up more. But right now, our priority is this, this, and this. Camera's messed up, or this is messed up. We got to fix it. So, do you guys have a set date in mind that you're looking to officially release seed? So. Uh, we do not, um, we do not have a set date yet. Um, I am currently, I have some plans in the works for us to finish and to have that because I'm bootstrapping. Um, I'm paying everything out of my pocket. Um, you know, and it's been very challenging, you know, because I didn't, when I started the company, I, I really didn't have much and I had, I had to pay my rent. I had to pay some bills and then I was just left with like probably like 50 or a hundred bucks in my account. And so, you know, I've, it's been a challenge, man. Like, um, it's like, yeah, it's been a challenge to, 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 to progress forward and, and, like we've won money through uh, pitch contests and things like that, grant money, you know, mm -hmm. and things a little bit here and there, um, or some, you know, a little little bit of donations and things, um, and that's helped. But you know, games cost it costs money, man. It costs money to make. You know, these are salaries we're talking about of you know really talented people, mm -hmm. uh, programmers and artists and things. So um, it's been moving very slow. And I said, you know, I had to sit down and I had to say, all right, how do we finish this game given the situation that we're in? And I'm, I actually have a plan in the works right now that I'm, I'm going to uh, share with you all um, and everyone on our email list um, coming up. I'm still sorting out the, 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 the kinks in the plan and everything like that. But once it's solid, I'm going to send out that email blast and let everybody know like, all right, man, here's the plan to get this done. Here's how you can support. Um, and, you know, we're hoping that it'll be done around this time. And, yeah. Excellent. So I'm still I'm still working that out uh, right now. But I feel like it's a pretty solid plan. I feel like it could work. Um, and, yeah. So I'll, I'll be sharing that come in the coming future. Excellent. I definitely have a lot of respect for the way you're going about it because it, you got a dream. Sometimes you really have to just put your feet, like you said, boots on the ground, just go out there and, and make it happen. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a hard road, but hopefully it'll pay off in the end. And I really hope it does work out for you guys. And, and it too. doesn't turn out to be, you know, a crap shoot or anything like that. So I, I, much respect for what you're doing to try and make the game that you want, that you want to get out there. So absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I appreciate that. That means yeah. a lot, man. And you know what? It will. You know, I have no question about that. I have no question about, in my eyes, the game is already successful. The game is already, you know, it, it's, it, that's already been manifested. And I've, 
you know, that's the thing about bare hand is that a lot of our decisions um, it stems from our faith. And I, I feel like I've seen enough signs to, to not question if it's successful or not. Uh, you know, I, I've seen too many signs. Um, and I'm just like, man, you know, um, you know, I'm just like the, the, with the challenges for a lot of people, uh, you know, a lot of people want to, want to get to the end, the end result, right? Oh yeah. The release, you know, the release and get the bunny. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and I think a lot of people have been hearing this lately, you know, because the way the universe has been working, but you know, it's not about, it's not about the end goal. It's about the process. You know, and I, when I first started, I had a hard time enjoying the process. You know, I, I kept wanting to get, get to, you know, next step, bam, bam, bam. What's the next step? Okay, man, we got to finish. We got to finish. But I had a hard time enjoying the process and I'm at a point in my life where I'm enjoying the process and I'm saying, I'm like, all right, I got this challenge. What can we do about this challenge? Like, how can we overcome this challenge? and really absorbing everything happening in that moment, um, even now, you know? And so it's already successful, you know? For me, it's a matter of, okay, I know it's successful. Who wants to be a part of this? You know, who wants, who wants to be a part of the community and our family mm -hmm. um, and, and grow with us, um, you know? And that's, that's, that's where my mind is with it. Um, right now. And, you know, I honestly believe that, you know, I believe that, you know, like point blank, man, like for me to make it this far with the res like to get that game looking like that and playing like that off the resources that I had, um, no question. I'm, I have no question that, that God helped me out. And, and, and really when I started, I was like, man, I do not want to do this company by myself. I said, I don't have salaries to pay people right now, but I don't want to do this by myself. So I need you to help me find people. And that's when I started, you know, seeing like meeting Nick and seeing people coming to my life or people that really, really rock with the vision. It was like, man, I want to be a part of that. And so, you know, like I said, I've just seen enough to where I'm like, yeah, no, nah, it's successful, man. You know, it's, I just can't quit. Right. Um, I got to keep doing it. And I have to appreciate the process and, and not just want, not just want the, you know, the end result or, you know, to come quick. And I feel like the gen the generation, this generation, you know, a lot of things come quick, bam, 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 bam. You get this instant gratification, yes, bam, 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 very bam, much bam. So. And, you know, there's not enough of like the, the anticipation or, you know, the appreciation of, why something takes long, you know? Oh, that's so, missing for sure. Yeah. That's yeah. that's definitely missing for sure. The Just the whole process, which is why I enjoy getting to talk to the developers themselves. I like, especially mm -hmm. over the last few years, Stephen can probably attest to this too, when we start going to conventions and seeing that passion and understanding what was going on behind the scenes and making friends enough with some of them to hear the entire process, it makes mm -hmm. you become a lot more patient. You know, yeah. it's like I see all of those different things that are firing and understanding that from an independent developer standpoint, it's going to take a little bit longer because it is a passion project out of love. It is being funded by themselves. They are doing mm -hmm. all this, but they're still doing it. And yeah, I have a mad respect for it way more than I ever thought I would in the beginning when we started doing this sort of thing. So really yeah. hats off to you man like that's it's a huge feat Appreciate and i love that. to hear that you're still going for it regardless of how long it's going to take and uh i can't wait to see when it's released Appreciate we know that. it's going to happen and i'm going to be playing it for sure oh yeah oh yeah we'll all be playing it you know <laughs> we'll, we'll all be playing it and enjoying it and you know seeing the, the greatness of what is what is see you know yeah. and i honestly i mean the industry will be dead without indies man because you know a lot indies the, the type of stuff indies has been creating and the innovation and yeah like like you know people like they 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 triple a know they get they're inspired from indie and they, you know, sure, a lot of AAA concepts come from indie con uh, indie concepts and 
And in the indie, a lot of indie games have that value to them, you know? Like, people are really putting themselves into these into these projects. Mm-hmm. And well, you see a lot of AAA that. companies now buying up independent companies. Right, right. Like, you know, it's like... It's like, yeah, you know, they're making these 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 big games that get like millions of users or whatever, and they're trying to get that quick cash, you know. But they know, like, man, we got to get this stuff that has value to it uh, in terms of, you know, the the feeling and and the emotion behind it, because you know, people people look, you know, past that after a certain point. I say you have games that, like, you know, they thrive, they thrive, and they thrive, and then they disappear. Mm-hmm. Um, because there's no value to it. There's no substance, you know. Right. We say all the time around here that we love indie games because for us, that's where creativity strives. They're not out to make a buck. They're out to make a damn good game that they know and believe in. So we, that's that's why we want to support them and bring light to them as much as we can because. They need that life. You know, AAA is always going to be the shadow, but indies can thrive. They're thriving now, and it's it's great to see yeah. consoles like Nintendo really taking hold and saying, we want to really push this out there right. into, the, into the world. Like, I so, love that the Switch has been having so many indies, because now I'm actually able to talk about some of these games with people who never had access to it before. Like, you can't afford a gaming PC or doing something like that, but they can get a Switch. And now yeah. we can start playing some of these awesome games that unfortunately have not been making its way to console all these years, which is now starting to become a thing. So I'm excited oh, yeah. about that. I I really am. Definitely. Guys, do you have uh, any questions that I um, didn't touch on? No, I was actually just going to start hawking where we can follow this lovely gentleman right. and his team. Well, guys out there, if you would like to join Bearhand and spread the word about Siege, you can go to bearhand.co forward slash subscribe and or you can join their Discord channel. Uh, You can also, all links will be in the description, so if you want to find them there. uh, You can find them on Twitter at Bearhandy, which is B-A-R-E capital H, A-N-D capital Y. And you can also find Edwin directly at Eddie Win Back. And that will also be in the descriptions down below. You can tweet about the game. Let them know what you think. Share it with friends. That's what we want you to do. Mm-hmm. Share it with friends. Tell your friends about it. Let's get this thing out there. Go check it All out. All the social media things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know. And that's that. I, you know, that's, that's the beauty of this. You know, I, I really appreciate you all for doing this. And, you know... Like, you know, this is the type of thing. It's like, for me, it's like, like I said, I already know this, the success is, is there. And, you know, when the game is huge and all of that, it's like, yo, these are the people, these were the, like, the people that was there when everything was, like, coming up, you know, and everything was, was when we were just starting to really get the word out there, and, you know, because you're going to have... You're gonna have like, you know, you're gonna have the bandwagoners and 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 stuff, and you're gonna have people that, um, you're gonna have companies and you know publishers and all type of whatever coming on board because they're like, oh, it's hot now, you know. But it's like for this, it's like you know we're building a community, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm in, I'm appreciating that process like right now. I'm like, man, our community is growing. More people are becoming aware, um, becoming aware of it um, on our come up, you know? Yeah. No, so, you're doing the right things. You're you're going to the right events, it seems like, and mm-hmm. throwing it in front of the right hands. And hopefully uh, we'll get to get our hands on it and get more in-depth. And hopefully we'll get to talk to you uh, around release time as well and see how the process has come and... How oh, successful yeah. it, it 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 will be for sure. Thank you so much. I appreciate you giving us your time. It was really cool. Thank you. I love it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Absolutely. And hopefully we'll get to see you again at another PAX or another gaming event if we happen to be there. So we'd see where you're coming along. Absolutely. Definitely. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, thanks again for your time and uh, we'll see you later. All right. Peace. All right, there you go. That's all the show I got. Good people, man. Good people. Yeah. 
So, that's our show. Remember to follow us on Twitter at Super Mega Crash. Check out our Instagram if you want to see our weekly icon art. I was pretty proud of the one for today. Uh, send us an email to supermegacrash at gmail.com. Say whatever you want. And we'll read it on the show. And if you love the show, tell your friends to find us on the Pencil and Paper Podcast Network found on Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, wherever you find and listen to your podcasts. Thank you so much for listening. I am Stephen White. I'm Lacey Finley. Join us again next week, Super Mega Crash siblings. But until then, game on. This has been a Pencil and Paper Podcast Network production.